Bigfoot and Littlefoot, chapters 21 and 22, written by Ellen Potter. The end of the We're book. on to 21 and 22, the last two chapters in Bigfoot and Littlefoot by Ellen Potter. Uma. Hugo crashed through the woods, running as hard as he could. Behind him, he heard a terrible thump of the snoot-nosed gint, gint as it leapt down from the tree. Its shrieking call of, Uma, Uma, was getting closer and closer every second. Hugo ran through the woods and straight into the Frog Moon Festival. But the festival was oddly quiet. The Sasquatches weren't talking or laughing or eating or somersaulting. They were all standing very still and they were all staring at Boone, who had arrived a moment before Hugo. Snoot nose again! Snoot nose again! Hugo screamed, warning the others. Nobody moved. Nobody said a word. Finally, in a quiet, scared voice, Gigi said, That's not a snoot nose again, Hugo. That's a human. I don't mean him, Hugo said, pointing at Boone. I mean him. He turned around and pointed at the creature coming right at them. To Hugo's horror, the snoot nose gint, the snoot nose gint was as big as he was. Even more shocking, though, was that it was running on two legs. And it wasn't scaly like a regular lizard. It was covered with thick reddish brown hair. Ooh, ma, it shrieked, looking at everyone. Now Hugo could see headgear peeping out from the sides of the snoot nose gint head. Hugo sighed. It's Izzy, Hugo said. Hi, Yuho, Izzy removed his snoot nose gint mask. What were you doing way up in that tree, said Hugo. Climbing. It was my act of bravery, he replied. He looked at Boone, then at Hugo. Yuho, said Izzy, what is a Uma? He pointed at Boone. It was then that Hugo realized that the cry of Uma had only been Izzy trying to say human, which is very hard to say if you are wearing headgear. Everyone, said Hugo to all the Sasquatches, this is my friend Boone. Hello, said Boone. Then he bowed to them very deeply, which was exactly the right thing to do. And there he is. Chapter 22, Peepers. It took a while for Hugo to explain about Boone. He told everyone about the messages in the toy boat and about his ride on the big log down the wild river and how Boone had used an umbrella to save him from drowning. While he spoke, the Sasquatches kept staring at Boone, then at Hugo, then back at Boone again. None of the squidges had ever seen a real live human before. Some of the grown-up Sasquatches hadn't either. When Hugo was finished, Hugo's grandfather walked up to Boone. Careful, said Mrs. Rattlebags. I hear they bite. Grandpa looked down at Boone. Boone had to tip his head way back to look up at Grandpa. Do you bite? asked Grandpa. No, said Boone def definitely. And then he added, well, when I was two, I bit our cat, but only because she bit me first. Hugo's grandfather laughed. Then he shook Boone's hand carefully, of course, since Boone's whole hand was the size of Grandpa's thumb. Pleasure to meet you, Boone, he said. No, no, said Mrs. Rattlebags. I don't th like this. He'll tell other humans where we live. Then we'll be chased out of our lovely cave and we'll have to live in a nasty wet hole in a hill. Boone stood up very straight and with as much dignity as he could muster, he said, I promise never to tell a soul. Then he spit in his hand and crossed his heart. That's good enough for me, said Hugo's dad. And slowly, Sasquatch by Sasquatch, everyone agreed, except maybe for Mrs. Rattlebags, but that's just the way she was. After that, the festival continued, the act of, acts of bravery. Gigi stuck her uncle's pet rat on her head, and even though she looked like she was about to throw up, she kept him on there for a solid three minutes. Pip sang a song badly but loudly. Malcolm started to put a large spider in his mouth, but Mrs. Nuckluck stopped him in time. We are performing acts of bravery, Malcolm, not acts of stupidity, said Mrs. Nuckluck. In the end, Malcolm walked across the narrow plank of wood that was balanced on two boulders, but he looked very disappointed the whole way across. When everyone had done their act of bravery, Pip said, what about Hugo? He hasn't done his. Oh, I, Hugo stammered with everything that had happened lately. He had forgotten to choose an act of bravery. But he did do an act of bravery, said Boone. He chucked my umbrella at the snoot-nosed gint. 
It hit my wump, said Izzy, rubbing his backside. But he chucked it at Izzy, not a snoot-nosed gint, objected Pip. Well, he thought it was a snoot-nosed gint, Boone argued. That should count. It does count, said Mrs. Nuckluck, declared, and no one disagreed. Shh, said Gigi suddenly. She tapped her ear. Listen. Everyone grew quiet. At first they heard, all they heard was the soft rustling of the trees in the night, but then peep, peep. Peep, 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 peepers, spring peepers, Gigi said. For a while they all breathed in a brand new spring air while they listened to the frogs making their peeping song. They listened quietly like this until someone's stomach growled very loudly. For Sasquatches, stomach growling works the way yawns do for humans. It's very catchy. Pretty soon there were so many stomachs growling that no one could hear the peepers anymore, so it was clear that it was time to sit at the table and eat. Hugo scooped up a slice of gooseberry pie and put it on Boone's plate. Then he put one on his own. Boone took a bite of the pie while he looked down at the table at all the Sasquatches. A guy could never feel lonely here, he said, then sighed. Half of the sigh was happy, which meant the other half was sad. Hugo looked down the table too. There were grown Sasquatches and squidges and even the just born Sasquatches, which are called shuttles. Everyone was eating and talking and laughing. Boone is right, thought Hugo. You can't ever feel lonely here. You could feel frustrated. You could wish you had adventures in the big wide world, but you could never ever feel lonely. And that was something. There's Boone. If you come back tomorrow, Hugo said to Boone, I'll show you how to play five rocks, two sticks. Really? Definitely, said Hugo. Boone cleared his throat and in a deep voice said, After their adventures, Bigfoot and Littlefoot sat under the starry sky, eating the best gooseberry pie in the whole North Woods and making plans for tomorrow. And that's the story of how Bigfoot and Littlefoot became friends. He smiled at Hugo. The end. Hugo smiled back. To be continued, Hugo said. And that is the end of our story. I hope you love Bigfoot and Littlefoot, the makings of a good friendship. Hope you read the other ones.